Hello, my favorite people. This is MJ, and you're listening to Married Wellness Podcast. Welcome, welcome. This is a podcast about so many things, but mostly it's experiences in my life that I share about self-mastery, self-love, my creative journey, and I hope you'll come along because there's a lot packed into each episode. Thanks for listening and welcome to season three. Married Wellness Podcast is brought to you by Anchor by Spotify. Anchor legitimately is one of the easiest ways I have found to get my podcast out there. It is a tool that you can edit and you can record and all the things you need to make a podcast. I am a huge advocate for storytelling and getting your message out there. And this is one of the best ways I have found to do it. And it is totally free. So what better place to start getting your message, getting your story out there and being the creative being that you are than to do that. So download the Anchor app and go to anchor.fm to get started. Do it. It'll be great. I promise you. Love your face. Hello, everyone. This is your friendly MJ for season three. We took a year off. We had two seasons before that. And here we're back. It is so beautiful to have you guys back. It's so lovely to be back. You don't even know. Or maybe you do. Maybe you feel the same way I do. It's good to be back. This season is going to be oh, a wee bit of a mod podge, if you will. We're going to do some solos, maybe take a few people and have some conversations. And we're going to go deep. We're going we're gonna to dig up some stuff. That's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to shovel off a decent portion of maybe dig our own grave. Who knows? It'll be fun. It'll be good stuff. Lots of healing process. I'll do a little quick recap of my last year. I spent a lot of time uh, consciously healing some wounds of mine that I knew was in the way of my dream. And to recap, a dream of mine is to open a sanctuary for creatives, uh, writers, and spiritual healers so that we can all have a space to do our solo work in nature, but still have someone on the property or someone to hold space for us during that process, alone together. That is the best way I can describe that. Uh, This year, I am actively working on a business plan, investments, all of that stuff. We are going to be working on that. And hopefully you guys can come along for the ride with me. I'll share trials and tribulations, my tears, my smiles, all of that stuff. Uh, I am also, uh, in the last year or so, um, building a community of writers. And whether that's you like to write poetry, you don't do it or you do do it to publish, um, you're a journal, avid journal writer, uh, you write novels, you write nonfiction, um, whatever you do for writing, the purpose of this writing group is to basically just hold space for each other, say, hey, I'm just having a rough day today, I've, I've come to a writer's block, or I'm doing an amazing job right now, and like, toot your own horn, man, like, we don't do that enough, I really don't feel like we do that enough. That That is a learned skill, I believe. So uh, I will link that in the show notes so that you can take a look, peek, see at what is on my, my uh, it's not link tree, it's beacons, but you know, same deal. Um, all of the shenanigans I've been working on. I am also part of a couple groups, one of a beautiful group of entrepreneurs and another one uh, where we all sit around and not sit around, but we talk about mental health and um, I will link. Th- uh, that's actually in my Beacons page as well. Uh, it's a free group. It's a suicide prevention and we do a lot in there. Uh, discovery questions, um, you know, 30 day self-care challenges, all of that kind of stuff, you know, um, try to keep that positive vibe going. But enough of that shenanigans. 
Let's get to it. Today, I want to talk about duality. And this is something that's been on my brain for a little bit. When I think of duality, I think of, if you are familiar with the tarot, when I think of duality, I always think of the scales, right? It's a little different than balance, the justice card, where you have, you know, the um, the scale with like the bowl on one side and the bowl or the plate on the other side. And like, you know, we've all seen it. It's, you know, the justice scales. And when I think of duality, I think of the and statement. Two opposite things or perceived opposite things, but they are not because we hold ourselves in both those spaces. A good example of this is you can be in a space where you both care for someone and you care for yourself, but those two things don't necessarily jive together. You can still love somebody and not have them in your life. Um, maybe that's not a great example, but that's the one that come up for me real quick. I am reminded of this quote and I, I'm saying it wrong, but I like the way I say it better. I, <laughs> that makes sense. Um, you are both the ocean and the drop in the ocean. Like you are both of those things. It is not you are the ocean or you are a drop. You are both of those things. Um, Just like in Buddhism, there's a practice where you come in and go out. It's a meditation practice that I learned. And it's basically if you're feeling really nitpicky or overwhelmed in a way that's like you are very, very much in your head, you basically go outside and you look up into the sky and you go, ah, right, lots of other things exist. It's not just me in my own head because there is a world in there too, right? So it's out and it's in. It's both of those things. And they're seemingly not together, right? They don't, it's like it's one or the other, but things aren't black and white. Everything's gray. Even black and white is both gray. There's there's not really a true white and a true black. Not in our sphere of consciousness, at least. So when you do that meditation or you do that thing where you're just feeling very in your head and you recognize it and you want to do something in order to move away from feeling like you're in your head, there's tons of things you can do. But one of the things that my meditation teacher has taught me or would taught me was to go outside and look up to the sky and like legitimately just look up to the sky for a, for a little bit until you feel like the expansiveness, right? You feel that expanse and you feel the way that there is beautiful sky and there's so much more out there than you can even imagine. And you realize that like whatever you're worrying about really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in the sense that at the end of everything, it will have been a pinhole in a shirt that no one noticed was even there kind of thing. You know what I mean? And the opposite end of that, if you are feeling like sometimes I feel like everything is too expansive and too much space and I have no idea how, like, I don't really mean anything and nothing means anything and I don't know where to go and you need to take it in. In those times, we sit with ourselves. We try to be a little bit more in our heads. I don't really need this as much as the other way around, but, you know, we can feel in our in ourselves we can sit with our bodies and be you know how does our feet feel how does our knees feel how does our torso feel how does our chest feel how does our elbows feel our hands our shoulders how does our face feel right now and know that we are here this is ours we get to have this body and there's a consciousness inside of it Um, Another like really interesting practice for this was when we were doing mindful eating practice, um, we would sit at a table and everybody was silent. Nobody talked during dinner and we would eat very consciously. How does it feel in your mouth? And chew it until you're done chewing and then swallow it before you pick up the spoon 
or the fork to eat another. We would like count. Our meditation teachers would have us count to 10 before we even picked up after we swallowed. Follow that food down your throat and even so much to sit and think of what it would feel like to, to like, does it hit your stomach? Can you feel that? And then you wait and you're like, okay, the silence, you know, that silence between like when somebody stops talking and somebody hasn't started talking yet. And there's that some people call it an awkward silence, but like that, it's just the space in between and there's nothing to fear about it. It just is. So that's what you're looking for. When you do this practice, you wait and you wait until the stillness is there. The food has settled into your stomach and you wait and you're like, okay, 10, 9, 8, I mean, slower than that, obviously. And then you pick up your spoon or your fork and you put another bite in there and you extend the amount of time you're eating, but also you're not shoving things in your face so quickly that you don't even know it's there. It is a very good practice in mindfulness and it's also a very good practice in um, going inward and knowing like you're having these experiences and they do matter. They do matter. You do matter. You have people that love you, people that are around you, even if you don't feel like that. I cannot tell you the number of times that I have had somebody come up to me and say something about a con- some content I have made or a poem that I had or something that I had done that I didn't think anybody was watching. I didn't get any, you know, likes or follows or, you know, comments or nothing I just either did it for me or I just did it and let it go right and then someone comes up and says something about how wonderful it was or even if they say like that was crap like look oh someone's actually watching someone's watching and I didn't even know it's amazing how many times we we don't realize just how much of a an impact we make on people and we don't even know that we do Especially if you're the type of person like I am, where if you feel more in your head than out of it, right? Um, sometimes we don't realize things around us, you know, that don't have to do with the narrative that we're playing at that moment. So these are good practices to do, being outward and coming inward. It's, um, I believe, so I'm actually right in the middle of this book called Becoming Supernatural by Dr. Joe Dispenza, and I highly, highly, highly recommend this book. I will put in the show notes. Um, I'm studying it to the studying, like sometimes I'll just read a book and read through it, get the concept and run with it. Um, This one, there's a lot of really great information in this. Uh, It goes into the science of, you know, he calls it supernatural. But for me, I, I believe it's more like the spiritual side of things like, you know, but anyway, inside the book, he he has this like meditation and some some of us might have done it uh if you're a self helpy self um uh what's the word for it i want to use uh self actualizing human who works on themselves a lot like i do um you this is not like a new super practice for you but i i've recome back to it and he talks in the meditation tuning into do not remember at the top of my head. It's like tuning into new potential or something similar to that. And in the meditation, he's like, feel the space. Feel the space. What does your neck feel like? What does the space around your neck feel like? What does the space between your neck and your collarbone feel like? So it's really doing the same thing as the expanse and inward. It's Oh, my neck is mine. Oh, but the space around my neck is also kind of not mine. So it's expanding, contracting, expanding, contracting. So any practice you can find that works for you, that it's expanding and contraction, we can work with that as a practice of duality, realizing that our truth, um, there was a book I read a long time ago that this guy was saying over and over in the book, Something that you believe is true, the opposite is also true. So if you believe the sky is blue, the sky is also red. Like, look, we all have a 
a similar experience on this planet. So obviously you look up to the sky and you're like, oh, it's, it's blue. And okay, we can all collectively understand that the sky is blue. But look, I can go take a picture of the sky and change a filter and it can be red. At night it's red. The sky is red when the sun goes down and you have a beautiful sunset. The sky becomes red. So again, just because something is true doesn't mean the opposite cannot also be true. That is duality. Duality is this space where it's one and the other. It's this and that. And like I said, it can be this and that. But that to me is a gray. It's, there's a gray there. And it's okay to be in gray. Um, a tr- there's a trauma response of having everything or having things be all or nothing. I run a lot with that in my life. Um, yeah, I still struggle with it now. Um, you know, I'm kind of looking at going back to a particular diet for myself where I cut out all processed foods. Um, the processed foods really do a number on my mental health. I've been keeping an eye on my moods and I notice when I eat a lot of processed foods, my anxiety gets off the charts. It's hard for me to emotionally regulate after I've done that. So, you know, but for me, you know, I'll go through my whole day and I'll have some great food. I'll have carrots all day or, you know, whole foods, meat and all that. And then I'll run into cookie or some other processed foods, crackers or something that's not even that bad. And I'll be like, "Ah, I just lost it. So I'll just eat the rest of, you know, this, whatever it is forever. And, you know, the next day and the next day. And, And then it kind of snowballs into now I'm just eating processed foods for the rest of the week. Um, Instead of giving myself grace where I was like, okay, well, I made a bad choice this one time, but it doesn't have to destroy the rest of the week. We can, you know, that's, I do struggle with that. Like when I fail, I want to continue to fail because I failed and I just want to say, okay, whatever. I don't want to do it anymore. So what does this have to do with duality? Well, again, it's when I think of duality, I think of the those scales again it's like there's something on this side but there's also something on the other side and that balances it out um but it also means that the truth is one two and every other decimal point in between one and two um or if you were thinking uh in computer terms it's zero and one and everywhere in between that um but so that's that is my ted talk (laughs) <laughs> uh, for today. Uh, we talk about uh, meditation. I really, really loved whenever we can come back to being mindful. If, if we can, all, even if it's two minutes a day, and I say that this is like where my practice started, and it seems really silly, and feel free to laugh, um, that I knew, even when I had my daughter and she was young, that the only time I had to myself really truly to myself was if I can close the door and go to the bathroom. Most of the time I'll keep the, the bathroom open, honestly. But when I had moments, especially when she was little, but I would use that time where I would pee to be completely, completely aware of my body in those moments. Those moments I could take a minute or two to breathe and be mindful of this one moment that's going on right now. And it didn't have to be, it doesn't have to be an hour long fancy meditation every day. It can just be every morning I wake up and when I go to the bathroom, the first bathroom trip, I close the door and I sit on the toilet and I go to the bathroom and I am mindful of this moment. I keep bringing it back. I feel my entire body. I feel the let go of all the things that no longer align with me. And let's be honest, if you're extra, if whatever comes out does not belong anymore, right? That's the the point of going to the bathroom. So I would use that moment to realize that I am letting go of the things that no longer serve me. It's a really great practice and it's so quick and it's so, it can be a very powerful practice and it's short. 
And you can incorporate other things, like when you're washing your hands, you can do a breathing exercise. You can add that on to the other, you know, the the second part of it, you know. Um, one of the other things, just to add a third wonderful practice onto this, is there was a gentleman who used to put sticky notes on all of the door, uh, the door jams, and just at eye height, so that when he walked through a door, he remembered to fix his posture and be more present in the moment. You know, when he walked through that door, he was um, the person he wanted to be going into the other room, no matter what room that was, uh, especially an outside door, you know, a door to the outside. And as a practice, if you wanted to do to add that onto that, is that when you walk in the bathroom, you do your <laughs> toilet meditation. I, it always makes me chuckle, but it really is effective. And wash your hands and do some breathing techniques. And if you add that one last bit where when you walk out of a bathroom, you own the rest of that day. Anything outside of that bathroom is like chin up, shoulders back back straight, walk out like you own the place, like be confident in who you are. And even if it's you can ha have that for a few minutes, start where you are and that's it. And sometimes even starting where you're not, right? So what I mean by that is that even if you're not feeling it, you can do tiny things to show yourself, to show up for yourself, to say, that I'm doing the work. And if you can show up at least a little bit every day and say, I'm doing the work to make myself love myself more, then you're doing a service for everyone else as well. Inward work equals outward work. Outward work equals inward work. If we're doing it in a fashion that's mindful and intentional. All right, my loves. You're such beautiful humans. I have loved every minute of this and I hope you've gotten some form of information from this or if you just like hearing my voice, that's cool too. Uh, sometimes I enjoy listening to people's podcasts or listening to them talk even if it's just because they have a great energy and I just need a little bit of that. That's okay too. You're welcome to stay as long as you want. Listen to as much as you want. And if you decide not to use any of it, that's okay too. It is your life, your mind. You get to do whatever you like with it. I'm putting in the end. I'm bleh. I'm putting the information out just like my writing. I put it out and whatever. I do not expect anything in return. So. I love your faces. I really hope that you return if you like any of my stuff or you think anybody will get any uh, wonderful things from it, please share, um, like, and subscribe. All of my stuff is on my Beacons page, so go over there. You know, if you want to buy my book, do that. If you want to be part of my writing community, do that. If you want to be part of the suicide prevention um, movement, then please do that got all sorts of good stuff for you guys. So, all right, you continue to be a beautiful human. I'll see you next time. Love your face. Mwah! Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate you. If you like this episode or any of the other ones, please leave a review, share with your friends, like and subscribe, all that jazz. And if you want more of MJ, please visit my Beacons page for all of the lovely things that I do on a normal basis. Everything me is on that page. And as always, you continue to be a beautiful human being. And I will see you next time. Love your face.